Thank you for Carrier Laws Visiting Experts. What a value to the community. These webinars and before COVID, it was in person. Um, it's a wonderful resource to have. So thank you to Carrier Law and to Chris for this opportunity to share information about a topic I am really passionate about. Hopefully you can all dream a little bit about travel uh, this afternoon. As mentioned, I am Christine Freed, co-owner of We Travel. It's a company that provides escorted group travel with a high level of expertise and customer service, but we've also expanded a little bit over the years after listening to our customers and travelers. So we really can't talk travel in 2021 without addressing the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. I'm going to share some travel pictures with you. So like everyone else in the world, we have learned a lot during this pandemic. Businesses have put processes and procedures in place that no one thought was ever needed. It certainly has been a wild ride. No one can confidently predict what the remaining months of 2021 and 2022 will bring. But we are optimistic while being realistic. I first wanna discuss some general concerns about travel. I'm often asked what type of travel is safer during the coronavirus pandemic. So the way you should really plan is trips that can be easily modified, easily implemented, easily changed, and easily canceled. The variant is flaring up in different states and countries and it is hard to plan accordingly. Signing up for a trip with a travel company that has their finger on the pulse of what is happening in the world and will cancel the trip if it is deemed necessary while refunding your trip may be the best option for you. Your travel professionals should know what companies are handling this best by putting their clients' welfare first while protecting your money. Another question, shall I be canceling or postponing all travel due to coronavirus? And that's a real personal decision but you don't need to cancel um, everything right now, but you certainly need to stay on top of the ever-changing information or have a travel professional who is on top of that information. The CDC has a page on their website with COVID-19 travel recommendations by destination. Now it's not, it's for the United States as a whole or any other country, it's not by a, uh, each state within the United States. They have a risk assessment level for COVID-19 by country. There are five levels and it is definitely something to take a look at. The US Embassy and Consulate's website is also a good resource. I will have those links available to you if you would like them. These and many more are websites that travel companies and travel professionals are using as a resource. As of today, which everything is ever changing, all airline passengers flying back into the US must provide a negative COVID-19 viral test taken within three calendar days of travel, regardless of where they're traveling from. And although the Department of State may allow travel to certain countries, each country makes their own decision on what the protocols are when you arrive. The European Union may make broad recommendations for their member countries, but each country within the EU decides how they will be handling the pandemic. Another website, travel.state.gov, they write, rate countries by levels as well, and another good resource for you. So many people are nervous to fly right now, and they are saying, you know, I, I'm afraid to be on an airplane where we're all breathing the same air for a very long period of time. It's a common fear that air travel, if one person is sick, then the entire plane is exposed, whether it's COVID or anything else, that all passengers will get sick from breathing the same air. And this is just a myth and simply not true. Because of high efficiency filters, the air you breathe on your flight is on par with the air in most hospitals. Most aircraft have robust filter systems that filter and recirculate the air from the cabin and it mixes with fresh air. The HEPA filtration system can make a complete air change through that, the entire cabin every two to four minutes with the HEPA filter capturing greater than 99% of airborne microbes. 
Ventilation systems on airplanes are set up in zones that serve as seven to eight rows. So it never goes completely through the cabin. They're set up in zones, seven to eight rows, and that it gets circulated in and out and with fresh air. Many travelers say they feel sick after flying. And for most of us, it's just how dry the air is on a plane ride. And by taking measures to keep your sinuses and nasal passages from getting dry, it will help you in the long run. So travel insurance is a big question we get as well. And the pandemic has really exposed the gaps in travel insurance coverage. Basic travel insurance policies generally don't cover pandemics or fears of getting sick. And plans often have a very specific list of covered reasons for cancellation. Although pandemics have been in the fine print of these policies, no one has ever expected a pandemic in, in the level that we've experienced. Virus exclusions have been part of various insurance plans since the SARS epidemic in 2003, so almost 20 years ago. Government regulators, mostly on the state level, have knowingly approved such exclusion for years. They say if you made the insurance companies cover pandemics, they would all go bankrupt or the premiums would skyrocket. Insurance never works when everybody has a claim. It only works when only a few have it and it is shared with other insurance companies. So most major airlines, cruise lines, hotel brands, and other travel providers have responded to the pandemic by offering unprecedented cancellation and rebooking policies. For the most part, they have stepped up and they have put good policies in place that benefit the traveler. Though most of these are temporary, it does mean that for certain types of trips, popular trip insurance policies with cancellation protection may not be as relevant. And some examples are Holland America. When a cruise would get canceled because of COVID, they would say, we'll, refer, we'll refund your money, but if you take um, uh, 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 the other option, we will give you 125% of what you paid toward a future cruise. And many companies did things like that just so they didn't have to refund the money and they would be insured of future um, travelers. So look at the way travel companies have responded in the past. And of course that gives you an indication of how they'll handle things in the future. Did they put their customers first? Again, using a travel agent who has seen firsthand how different companies have handled the pandemic is invaluable. Although this is not our past business model by, um, by only using partnering with one company, we have decided to only use Colette Travel for 2021 and 2022. So in the past, we've partnered with all different kinds of travel companies, and we've even come up with our own itineraries. But for the rest of this year and all of next year, we have decided to only use Colette Travel. Our reasoning is this. First of all, the strength of their itineraries for their outstanding guides and implementation of those itineraries. And especially right now for their cancel for any reason insurance. They are allowing passengers to cancel up to 24 hours prior to departure for any reason and get a full refund. Airline and everything. If they cancel the trip, if Colette cancels the trip, you receive a full refund, including the insurance cost. So safeguarding our passengers' money and having them feel confident to travel is paramount. Because of this, we are seeing people sign up for trips that may be a bit hesitant about what the future holds, but knowing that they can, they can cancel for any reason up to 24 hours um, before departure, um, that gives them a lot, of, um, a lot of comfort and a lot of confidence in, um, in signing up for a trip. So paying by credit card. Know what your options you have on your charge cards for travel purchases. Your credit card may give you some protection for your travel purchases. Every credit card is different. So dig into the details and know if you are covered and for the circumstances in which you are traveling. There are a number of premium credit cards that offer trip cancellation and interruption insurance, as well as coverage for baggage delays, lost and damaged baggage, 
trip delay reimbursement, and even medical evacuation benefits and travel accident insurance, among other safeguards. Please do your homework to see what, if any, protection your credit cards offer. I want to reiterate, though, if you buy insurance that is not canceled for any reason, fear of travel, if you're apprehensive about COVID, that is not a covered reason with many in most of those companies. So many tour companies and cruise lines have their own insurance. You need to read their policies. Some only cover 80% of what you've paid. And if you're paying for an expensive trip, only covering $4,000 out of a $5,000 trip and there's two of you is a lot of money left on the table. Some cover 90% of the trip cost and have stipulations. Some are very good. So you need to ask, and you need to read and you need to rely on experts as well. Some travel companies, and I'm sorry, travel insurance companies, they won't refund your money. So if a trip is canceled, they're saying, we're not going to refund your insurance, but we will transfer it to a policy for a new trip in the future. So again, ask questions, do your homework. Organizations with current information, please do not just rely on the news you or the company you are partnering with should be closely monitoring guidance provided by the World Health Organization, the CDC, US Department of State and other public and private organizations. So a couple of programs out there for you to consider. One is called the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. This service of the Bureau of Consular Affairs is a free service to allow US citizens and nationals traveling or living abroad to enroll their trip with the nearest US embassy or consulate. So if you're going to Italy, you might want to enroll in the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. The benefit is you receive important information from, from the embassy about safety conditions in your destination country, it helps you make informed decisions about your travel plans. It helps the embassy contact you in an emergency, whether it's a natural disaster, civil unrest, or even a family emergency if someone's trying to get a hold of you. It helps family and friends get in touch with you in an emergency. The TSA PreCheck, I am amazed at how few of our travelers use the TSA PreCheck. So this is, first of all, it keeps you moving and saves you time and stress in US airports. So you may be in line to, to go through the security screening and you see this other line moving much quicker, but you have to be a TSA pre-check to be in that line. It only works from US airports. It only is, it is domestic airports and it's only travel by air. It costs $85 for a five-year membership. So what you do is you go online, you enroll, you make an appointment, you enroll at a local in-person appointment to provide your fingerprints, supply citizenship and ID documents, you pay your $85, and if you're approved, you will be given what is known as a KTN number, a known traveler number for TSAs. For more information, you can go to tsa.gov. The benefit is you get to go in the faster line through security. You do not need to remove your shoes. And if you're over 75 or know someone who's over 75, they do not need to remove their shoes. They just need to tell them their age. You do not need to remove your laptop. You do not have to adhere to the 311 liquids. You do not have to remove belts or light jackets and you get through the expedited security screening. There's also something called global entry. So global entry takes everything for the TSA pre-check. You get that as well. But this is entry into the United States from international destinations. And it's also not only travel by air, but land and sea as well. It's only $15 more. It's $100. Also good for five years. Apply online. But this time you can't go to an office in Grand Rapids. You have to schedule and attend an in-person appointment. In Michigan, unfortunately, these appointments are only located in Detroit, Port Huron, or Sault Ste. Marie. There was actually an office open in South Bend, Indiana, which through COVID they closed. That's 
actually the closest office that you could go for an appointment. But I know even in May, they had not opened that back up again. Uh, but for an appointment, the closest destination is in Detroit. Again, membership lasts for five years. As mentioned, it includes a TSA pre-check, reduced wait times with self-serve kiosks. There's no paperwork to be filled out by hand like by into entering the country. And there's just, uh, it's very convenient and a lot more expedited. So global entry and TSA pre-check is something to consider if you fly. So there's several different ways to approach travel. And the first one is spontaneous with very short lead time. This is a, this today and in the past year and a half is a great time to explore your community, city, state, or region by car. With information still evolving with COVID in different parts of our states and country experiencing changes on a regional basis, they are all at different points on the COVID curve. It is an approach to consider. Keeping it closer to home may be the recommended approach at this time or making well-informed decisions about the current crisis before traveling. There's also planned travel as an individual. So whether you are planning the trip for yourself or choosing a company in which to travel with, you need to do your homework. Current information on closures of venues, limited numbers in a venue, mask wearing, which we're seeing popping up at various places around the world and even in our own country, is all information that is constantly changing and evolving. And some states are doing it by region or county. If you're planning your own trip, you need to research the cancellation policies of hotels, airlines, car rentals, pre-purchased venue admissions. Consider signing up with a trusted, experienced company that handles travel and ensure that the company has done the legwork and will continue to monitor all situations. The third way to vacation is to join a company like We Travel that provides escorted group travel. Although currently we are only partnering with Colette Travel in the near future, the foreseeable future, some companies like ours pre-COVID only partnered with one tour company at all times. They do that because they get the highest commission rates and perks. Our company pre-COVID, well, even currently, puts our itineraries first. We value solid partnerships and value is, is very important to us, the trip value. We will go back to partnering with a variety of travel companies, as well as creating custom trips with itineraries when this pandemic has reached its end. Our travelers know that we've done our homework. They trust us. We've built that relationship. We make every effort to advocate to, for our individual travelers, as well as for the entire group on our trips. We escort our own trips. So we meet prior to the trip with our group at a pre-trip meeting. We are with you on the airplane, throughout the trip, and we act as a resource before, during, and after the trip to give you the best possible experience. So we are not the guide. We are not the expert. There are countries like Scotland I've been to four times, and when I went to Kenya, I had never been there before. So we partner with guides who are experts, but we are experts at different um, different trip experiences. So, so one thing that we do is we handle emergencies and unexpected issues. That's part of our job as a trip escort. I have been in the back of ambulances and hospitals and have addressed numerous health issues on past trips. We have handled some things. We handle the polar vortex. Remember that when that happened a couple of years ago? It hit while we were in New Orleans, we were getting 30 people home, the, the Chicago airport was shut down and so was Grand Rapids. I was boots on the ground with, the, with our travelers, um, trying to figure out how to get us home. My sister, Debbie, who is the co-owner of, um, of our company as well, she was here trying to get us back home in, as well. In that instance, our travelers, they were enjoying a cup of coffee, ice cream, a drink, while we were figuring out how to get us home. We are also the glue of the group and provide opportunities during time on our own. A few examples of this is when we were in Havana, Cuba, and we offered, after our day tour was done, to meet anyone in the lobby of the hotel that wanted to go and wander the downtown area and further explore. 
For many, wandering in Havana, Cuba on their own was outside of their comfort level. But with the seven of us of the 26 who were traveling with us, it was a small group, but we all joined together and wandered and explored. Some of our travelers decided that they wanted to put their feet up and others joined us. Another example during our few hours of downtime in Kenya is we arranged through our guide an opportunity to take a nature walk outside of the compound with a local Maasai chief one of the absolute highlights of the trip. It wasn't even on our itinerary. So on time on your own, which we value, we love to wander. We also try to plan um, opportunities, whether it's just wandering together as a group or a, a nature walk with a Maasai chief. Uh, we try to provide those opportunities for our travelers too. So companies like ours are a good fit for many people. First of all, people like Chris, who went to Ireland with us, they are busy, they have, they have a busy job, they have a busy family, busy life, they just want to sign up and show up. Even for retirees, busy people, they don't want to do all the research and figure this out, they want to trust the person that they are partnering with, them, and they want to sign up and show up. They want others to do the homework and legwork. They want to sign up and enjoy. Similar companies to ours cater to those that have um, lost confidence in travel or perhaps never had confidence. We have people who are coming to us who have never been to Europe, for example, and this is their first international trip. Times have changed. Travel has changed. Perhaps their travel partner could no longer go with them. They want to travel with others who know how to navigate in different states or countries and handle unique circumstances. We all know those things tend to pop up while traveling. We also cater to the single traveler who may want to find a roommate or just a group to get connected with. Others, they just enjoy sharing the experience with other like-minded people. Although we are located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we have travelers from all over the state of Michigan, as well as Texas, Florida, Indiana, California, just to name a few. So check out our website, look into our company, within, look into a company within your community or look into ours. I really encourage you to do that. I was recently asked for my recommendation on some of the countries to travel if you're the novice traveler, a new traveler. Man, that's hard to choose. There's 195 different countries in the world. Before I give my recommendations, I wanna mention some things to consider. Language barrier. Um, perhaps if you've never gone outside of our boundaries of the US, you want to be in a place where they speak English fluently and, and many most people in their community do. The tourism infrastructure. Look for well-developed tourist scene and infrastructure, public maps, and what they call wayfinding, easy public transport, and so on. And also safety. You can always check with the U.S. Bureau of Consular Affairs online, too. So the novice traveler, the U.K., um, and Ireland are wonderful options. Switzerland is a wonderful option. When my husband had never been out of our country, that's, the, that's where I took him, is to Switzerland. Canada, South Africa, Australia, the Netherlands. And although I have never been there before, Thailand was on everyone's list for the novice traveler. I can't wait to go there. Ocean cruising. Many people have gone ocean cruising and it is a wonderful option to this sign up and show up kind of thing. And how we work things is we will have, I think for the Adriatic, we had about 30 people and we had uh, tables reserved for us every night because everyone was off during the day doing their own thing. And all of those tables were our groups. But as we came there for dinner, we always mixed up who we were sitting with. So you weren't sitting with the same, you know, eight people every night and you got to know everyone in the group. And it was a great way to mix um, the ocean cruising that we've done. We've done the Baltic, the Adriatic, Alaska. So there's great value in ocean cruising. There is a reason to cruise and not just the Caribbean, which is more of a vacation versus really a learning opportunity. 
but you want to see the fjords from the Baltic Sea. You want to see Croatia that has a thousand islands offshore from a ship, because if you're on land, you're missing that opportunity. To sail amongst the Greek Isles is very different than just staying on the land. So ocean cruising really provides a wonderful opportunity in that regard. River cruising is one of my favorite. I'm about to go on my fifth river cruise. Um, my husband will be going on this trip because he loves river cruising as well. Uh, river cruising in the United States has been very different experience than it is um, in, in Europe, but Viking has just opened its market just before COVID hit uh, on the Mississippi. I'm looking forward to and hoping that they start doing like the Snake River and the Columbia and so on. But river cruising in Europe is just delightful, very different uh, than ocean cruising. It is a bit much more intimate experience. Um, usually between 140 and 190 people are on the river cruise, so it's it's a it's in, more intimate. They drop you off, and you immediately are walking along the sidewalk with people who are bringing their kids to school or are walking to work. Very different than the ocean cruising experience in most places. Um, it, it is not a let us entertain you. There's no casino. There's there's nightly entertainment, but there's not a choice of entertainment. Um, but it is also the people there are pretty well traveled and you have interesting, very interesting dinner conversation. Um, it's also a lot more all inclusive than an ocean cruise is. Uh, your alcoholic beverages are included and, and pretty much everything is included where on an ocean cruise, it's you're paying um, extra for a lot of things. And there's also places you wanna go that you'd rather do younger than older. So for example, Machu Picchu, Peru is one of my favorite trips that I've gone on. And that is the citadel that is built on the top of a mountain in Peru, but there's no handrails. There's no uh, steps that are the same height. Um, I'm looking at part of Peru right now. These are some pictures that you're seeing there. Uh, so that is something you also want to pick your destination saying, I better do that now rather than later, or I'm going to save that trip for later. Uh, so think about that when you're looking at thinking about your other destinations too. I have been asked, how do I get my travel fix while waiting for this pandemic to pass? I also get to the question, how can I instill my love of travel to my kids and my grandkids? You might have snuck a peek of my seven grandkids when I was going from one PowerPoint to the next. So this is a time where things are a little bit quieter in our lives. Um, and although things are ramping back up, uh, a lot of people, uh, they're sticking closer to home. And so these small Michigan museums like the Heiser House in Plainfield Charter Township, the small museums in Coopersville, Nuego, I just recently went to the one in Lowell or Rockford are delightful. And I highly recommend that. The Kent County Recycling Center is so informational. Um, and you can bring kids there, but you can also just you as an adult go there and learn about the process that's in our community. If you've not gone to the Meyer May House, you, you are missing so much. That is the Frank Lloyd Wright designed home that is just south of downtown and it's open two days a week. It's owned now by Steel Case Foundation and they have restored it to its former glory and it is so well worth going. Of course, our museums, you know, the public museum, the presidential museum, and the planetarium, and even some for-profit businesses like Founders Brewery locally have some great tours, so highly recommend those. Just beyond Grand Rapids, if you've not gone to USS Silversides, the submarine, which is in Muskegon, they have an extremely well done museum, and the submarine is a World War II decommissioned sub, and um, very interesting to go to if you're claustrophobic or can't do the 
the ladders going down into the sub. The museum has it all on video, so you can still enjoy it that way. The Air Zoo in Kalamazoo, Wolf Lake Fish Hatchery in Matawan. We're bringing four of our grandkids there in a couple of weeks. We've gone once before. And very interesting on how the DNR populates our rivers and our, and our lakes um, through their fish hatchery program. Country Dairy Farm Store in New Era, Amber Elk Ranch in Ludington. Those are places we brought our grandkids and I've also brought groups of people to as well. Engine House Number no. 5 Museum, which is a fire station that used to be at Monroe and Leonard, which was disassembled and reassembled out in Allendale, is very cool. And some day trips from here, the Holocaust Memorial Center, you'll walk around with a lump in your throat, but it is so compelling and to really um, understand even further what happened during World War II. I'm all about historic home tours, whether it is local or in our state or domestic or international. But here, day trip from Grand Rapids, the Alden B. Dow home in Midland as he was a protege of Frank Lloyd Wright. Incredibly interesting. His studio was there, his, um, his home. And after they moved out, I think it was in the 1970s, they left their clothes in the closet, their dishes in the kitchen. So you can walk in and you can tell it was done in the 1970s, but it's a very wonderful tour. The Kellogg Manor House in Battle Creek, the Honolulu House in Marshall, the Felt Estate in Sagatuck, just to name a few. The historic Jackson State Prison, which was, um, was closed in the mid 1930s is a really interesting tour. Michigan State Capitol, the Rouge River Plant Tour in Detroit area and the Yankee Air Museum at Willow Run. Um, I mean, there's so many opportunities that, that if you don't feel like you're feeling comfortable enough to, to travel outside of Michigan, these are really good opportunities for you to um, get your travel fix in. And also many of those things that I listed are great for, for kids and grandkids as well. Travel logs, I recommend seeking those out. That Calvin University's call program, um, they're not offering any this fall, but they should be doing them after the first of the year. That's their plan right now. The OLLI program at Aquinas, the Osher Lifelong Learning, wide range of classes, but they always have some travel related programs in their offerings too. Grand Rapids running tours, Caroline Cook has become a dear friend of mine and her tagline, because I don't run, so I'm not interested in a running tour, it's called Run, Walk, Ride, Listen, and she offers walking tours, and a lot of them are even free through DGRI, which is the Downtown, the, um, downtown Grand Rapids, Inc., and you can go on her website, grandrapidsrunningtours.com. And I have gone on countless tours. I have lived in, in Grand Rapids for 34 years and I learn every single time I go on one of her walking tours. And also something for kids, grandkids, but also for people our age is the virtual reality company called Amped Reality. So if you need your travel fix, my husband and I brought our older two grandkids there, but we put on a virtual reality helmet, I'm going to call it. I don't know if that's the proper name, but um, and it was of uh, the bombing of Berlin. So you are in an airplane of a British bomber. The audio is actually actual audio footage from the bomber in World War II. You have this helmet on and you're in the cockpit of this bomber. And when you look over at the side, you see Berlin up in flames. You see all the, the bombs being dropped and the audio happening of the pilots. And man, it was, it was so realistic. But they have countless um, opportunities, you know, um, in, in Egypt and the pyramids and all kinds of interesting um, educational things. It's not just for kids, it's for us as well. Uh, so check out Amped Reality. It's on 28th Street right here in Grand Rapids. So as I wrap up, I'd like to extend two invitations to you. Part of our company, We Travel, is called We Venture. We Venture are our trips. We also have something called We Gather, and those are educational opportunities to learn about travel-related topics. 
although we are really good at what we do, we are not the experts in everything. So we have presentations that are travel related that we offer to everyone. We've not held them during COVID. We are about to start ramping them up later this year. But an example of a past program is we had someone come in and talk about Dubai. I don't know if I'll ever get to Dubai, but boy, was it interesting to learn about Dubai. So they're not a sales pitch. A lot of times we are, we're not even going there um, anytime soon, but it's a, a way for us to come together, learn beside our travelers and get together, build relationships with each other, have people get to know us. And I'd like to in, invite you to, to those. We, we tell people, you don't even have to travel with us if you're interested in these. Everyone is welcome, whether you want to travel with us or not. We have a marketing method called WOMB, W-O-M-B, which stands for word of mouth baby. And we like to get the word out. And if it's not something you're interested in, then perhaps, or even if you, you are interested in it, you can also tell other people about us who may be interested in it as well and a good fit for them. So I also want to invite you to our 2021-22 trip launch. And what that is, is we go over the uh, destinations that we're offering um, coming up the rest of this year and all of next year. It is scheduled for 1 p.m. on Wednesday, August 4th, which is next week, Wednesday. So it, we hold all of our programs at Steggingas. And I always get a chuckle. I just did a program yesterday and everybody laughed when they heard that we're meeting at Steckingas. Steckingas is a funeral home. It is located in Belmont at Post Drive in 131. It is centrally located no matter what area of town you're coming from. It's right off the highway. It is a beautiful facility and they offer it to us for free. So we have been going there since 2014 when we started our company. Um, before that, for over 20 years, I have been trip directing. I worked for a travel club at a Detroit Metro called Nomads. And unfortunately, in 2011, they closed their doors during the recession. And then I sort of did trip directing for another company and then decided with my sister um, to do We Travel starting in 2014. So we needed free space. You know, we were a startup and Stacking has opened their doors and we've been partnering with them ever since. Um, speaking of my background, I also have a day job with Northview Senior Citizens. I've been their program director for 13 years and escort pre-COVID 22 motor coaches a year, plus luncheons and lectures and all kinds of opportunities. So I'm very experienced with moving lots of people um, and planning lots of itineraries. Um, so, so anyway, to get back to our we travel launch that is on Wednesday, and just please reach out for us if you would like to make a reservation. Right now, I think we have about 50 people coming. Um, and we expect to, we usually have about 70 come. Um, and our Portugal trip, our Iceland trip are already confirmed for next year. And we're offering other um, opportunities too that I'll share with you in a minute. So please know that policies and procedures are now in place throughout the business world and everyone is better prepared because of it. There are some wonderful companies out there to help you with your travel needs partner with one of them, whether it's me or someone else. But one thing we've learned through this pandemic, travelers are a resilient and determined group of people. It has been a pleasure having you with me this afternoon. And I'd love to take some questions and turn things over to Chris as well. Thank you so, <clears throat> thank you so much, Christine. I, oh my gosh, I even learned quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just, just fascinating. And um, so one of the questions we have is, um, let's see. Oh, what was your most inspirational trip that you have taken? So probably inspirational um, in different ways. When I was in Machu Picchu, at the top of the citadel, it was very spiritual. It was knowing, and I'm getting chills just talking about it. It is knowing that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, these peoples created the citadel with no written language, 
no tools other than, you know, things that were offered 500 years ago. Um, and to know that on the summer solstice, the, the sun shines in this one window and hits the sundial on the floor accurately. Oh, wow. It was just mind blowing. And it wasn't just like one super smart person who was planning it. It was done over generations. So it was really a community thing with many people who had, had to help plan this. So in that way, inspirational, it was, I was in awe of the accomplishment uh, so that was really incredible. And also Kenya, um, to be with the Maasai people, one of the highlights was, was uh, this nature walk with the Maasai chief. And not only did what we learned from him, but the questions he asked us. And, you know, we sort of wandered outside the compound that's all, you know, fenced in and armed guards for the, for the animals and all of that. Um, but it was a real personal exchange. And um, so my husband likes to travel. He doesn't love to travel. So he usually goes with me about once a year, once every 18 months. But he even said to this chief, uh, what a highlight it was for me. And I got, I was sort of walking in front of him, got a little choked up just because I feel like that about travel and learning all the time. Yeah. He did not. But on that trip, it was that meaningful to him too. So those are a couple of unique experiences that were just really moving. What if I don't move as fast or I have a walker or a cane or yeah. even a wheelchair? Sure. So wheelchairs are difficult um, internationally because our, you know, American Disabilities Act really has put the place things in place that people with a wheelchair can get around with. That is not the case in Europe. It, it, and uh, it's just not. So it is working with us and knowing what places to go to. Um, a river cruise, an ocean cruise, they have the capability of and the resources um, and the staff to help people in those cases. Um, so those are better opportunities than getting on and off a bus where you are physically, it, it's hard for some people, those, those buses, those steps are steep. It takes some upper body strength as well. Um, so in that respect, a lot of times a river cruise or an ocean cruise is a better way, but that's again, a, a way to counsel. We, we have planned individual, not planned, but we have consulted with individuals who say, I want to go on your trip to Iceland, but it's also our 50th wedding anniversary. We want to go to Hawaii. And we, we sort of listen to them and what they want, but also what their needs are um, and, and come up with the best possible options for them. If I don't travel a lot, will, on, will I feel uncomfortable if a lot of people are world travelers? So the question is, is if I'm a novice traveler, yeah. What is that experience on a so trip tra with experience? So the, tra the travel community is um, so all encompassing. There, there's all different levels. I've gone to over 45 countries. I'm decently traveled for my age. I certainly haven't gone to everywhere. So when I'm on a river cruise, I am sitting, it tends to be more well-traveled people who are on the, the rest of the ship with us. If we have 30 people, you know, there's 160 people. We still have 130 people on there. We don't know, but I'm always asking, what is New Guinea like? I don't know if I'll ever get there. Tell me about it. Um, and I learn from others. And then sometimes I'm learning, oh, I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> In other places, I definitely want to go to. So, yeah. so being open and learning from others. But even if you are new to traveling, we've all had our life experiences to share. And it is amazing how connected we all are and how many similarities we have. Mm -hmm. So novice traveler, they sort of get taken in by the group and everyone wants to help them out. And one of the coolest things for me is going with someone who has never traveled before because yeah. seeing it through their eyes, it brings you back to the first time you had traveled as well. And that they 
they, that they notice these small things that I no longer notice and I'm seeing it through their eyes. And it was funny, I have a sister-in-law who lives in a very small town in Tustin, Michigan, and she had brought her mother-in-law to the shopping mall in Traverse City. And her mother-in-law, who was at the time in her 70s, had never been to a shopping mall before. And my wow. sister, Cindy said she just walked around with her mouth open, couldn't believe what she was saying, seeing. So Cindy, the following couple months, she was going to um, on an international trip with me. And I said, that is exactly how you're going to be when we are flying internationally. You're going to be walking around saying, oh my gosh, I can't imagine. Um, so, and that is fun for everybody else to experience that and sort of remember what, what it was like when you were a novice traveler too. Right, right. Well, I think that's it for the questions. I'm gonna launch a poll and I, Hope everyone who is um, still on will um, will answer it. But I want to thank you so much, Christine, for um, sharing your expertise today. Um, again, I just had a absolutely my husband and I fantastic trip when we went to Ireland, and um, and if anyone hasn't been to Ireland, I would highly recommend it. Absolutely. It, the trip that we went on was very, um, you know, went throughout the country in a, yeah. you know, basically a week. So it was quick. So a couple of years later, I actually, my husband and I actually went back just to be in Dublin for like four days. We took a long weekend. And, um, and I think that's one of the other beautiful things about travel is that even when you go, to a place there's so much to see but you're only seeing one piece of it and it just opens your mind up to the possibilities um, of you know what you can ex you know what you can explore and also what you don't need to see again you've experienced yeah, good point good point and where you want to go back to um, I've been to a country before that I, I had a great trip glad I went I, you know I I if I go back again, that's fine, but it's not on my list where Scotland I've been to four times. I'd go back again in a heartbeat. So wow. but it does help, help, you know, um, where you want to continue to explore. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you yeah. to the attendees for, for them tuning in as well. Yeah. Uh, please contact me with any questions that you have. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.